Hmm, favorite day of the year. My birthday, wedding anniversary. Nope, it's Sphero EDU app update day. We're always trying to update the Sphero EDU app to give you more features and make it easier to program Sphero. Now, a lot of you are probably using block programming to learn your first lines of code. Well, guess who invented block programming? Well, that would be MIT up in Boston. These guys are really smart. They invented a thing called Scratch, which is kind of the basis for all block programming and what we built our block canvas based on. Well, this app update actually implements Scratch and replaces our old block canvas. But don't worry, it looks mostly the same, but it's just a lot better. Let's take a look at all the big updates. Here we go. Let's make a simple square program to highlight some of the differences in the new block canvas. Notice that at the bottom, the tray now actually has fully visible blocks that aren't just icons anymore, they're full block previews. Here's a roll block. Notice the blocks actually look mostly the same. Let's make this program a square. So we'll loop a roll block four times. Now, when I pull in an operator, notice that the basic operator is actually collapsed about six different operators into one. Here I'll pick the addition operator. Sensors basically work the same where I can embed a sensor block into an operator. I can add 90 degrees for my square, set a speed, and set a duration. Now, another difference with this block canvas is that I can actually move all the blocks around. Whereas in the old canvas, they were pinned to the left side. But let's say I have a bunch of messy blocks around and things aren't very organized. I can go to the overflow, click clean up blocks, and everything now automatically adjusts to the left side. Let's get rid of these blocks that I don't need for my square. Let's say I've deleted a block or made a change I didn't want to. Now we've got an undo button in the bottom right, and you can undo as many times as you want. You can also redo to undo your undos. Let's add some sound to this square. I'll drag a sound block in, and whoa, check it out. Bunch of new sounds in here. We got a whole new science fiction category of sounds, tons of new animal sounds. We actually more than doubled all the sounds in the, in the sound library. I'll pick a random animal. That's actually an owl. Oh, cute little owls. A few things about the way you handle blocks has changed as well. Now, if you long press on a block, you'll get four options. You can duplicate, which will duplicate the selected blocks. I'll throw these ones away down in the trash, which now is down at the bottom. The next option for long press is delete or I can add a comment, just like in the old box canvas. And the last one is our block help hint. If I tap that, I get a really nice hint as to what this block does. Got it. Functions and variables are much easier to manage in the new canvas. Let's create a variable to start. Notice that there's a simple modal now to name your variable. Let's call this one var1, and a way to select your variable type. Let's choose number, and I'll give the default value of three. Notice that when you create a variable, it actually dynamically creates set blocks based on the variable type you created down here in the bottom right. Then you can drag that onto the canvas. This is a little different than the old canvas where the generic set block was in the operators category. Notice that if I create a, another variable called var2, that's also a number variable, when I go to the set block, I can actually hit the drop down and change it to be var1 or var2. This will work with as many variables as you create. And lastly, with variables, we've actually added a new type of variable called a Boolean. Boolean is basically true or false. So let's name this, am I cool? Which of course is true. And notice that a new set block is created and only the Boolean types can be dragged into this set block. Functions are set up really similar to variables in the new canvas. If I hit create new function, I can come in and give it a name like practice, and I can select any number of parameters that I want. So let's call this param1, and we'll have a string parameter called param2, and then once I hit enter, it will actually bring this function define block onto the main canvas. In the old canvas, there was actually a secondary kind of sub canvas where you define functions. This is much simpler. Now I can just come and start adding blocks to my function. Then if I wanna actually call the function from the main loop, I come down back to the canvas tray and drag that function in uh, wherever I want it to be called. And I can actually change the parameter values right from here. If I want to edit this function, I just long press on the function define block, 
click edit and here I am back at the function create screen where I can add or remove parameters and rename anything I want. Looks like that cleanup blocks tool will be really useful right now. Oh, there we go, very pretty. A cool new block that we've added are trigonometry functions. If you go to operators, notice that you can come down here to the bottom right, select the trig operators block and embed it in any oval bubble and select sine, cosine, tangent, or all the arcs. Pretty cool stuff. The great thing about the new canvas is that it's also compatible with all of your existing programs. Loving me some new features, features, features. Don't you just love app update day? It really is the best day. I mean, you can't argue. Hope you enjoyed this overview of the new Sphero EDU app, the new Blocks Canvas. And oh, by the way, make sure to check out all of our Block Series videos. We've updated them to reflect all the changes in the app. And feel free to email us at education at sphero.com if you have any issues with the new app or even some ideas to improve it. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time when we do another app. And we'll see you again soon.